So uh, my name is Yuri. I'm a developer from uh, Montreal, uh, Canada. Uh, I'm daughter of uh, Embark, uh, as well as uh, some other projects. More recently, Transaction Del Relay. Uh, you might know me in Reddit as uh, Ilium Craft. So today I'm going to talk about Embark uh, 2. And um, so Embark was the first uh, framework for for Ethereum DApps. And uh, to give some background on some of the features, it's, uh, so it's compat compatible with any build pipeline. You can use it with Grunt or Meteor or whatever pipeline you're, you're used to. Uh, Embark 2 will come with its own uh, pipeline for convenience purposes for development, but you will still be able to use it with any, any pipeline. Uh, it also supports, you can uh, test your contracts using JavaScript. Uh, it also keeps track of the, the contracts that uh, have already been deployed. And it, uh, it's smart about it, so you can even refactor a contract. And so long you don't change something uh, that affects the, the, ex, you know, the external of the contract, you want, you want to deploy again. So you can refactor, say, an internal uh, variable. You can change the name. And it will not redeploy because you haven't really changed anything. But if you change, say, uh, a public variable, then it will redeploy because there's, there's a code change. Uh, you can also uh, manage different changes with it. You can deploy to a development chain. You can deploy to the production chain. And you can also use uh, both Solidity and Serpent. Uh, you, can use it either, you can use either of them, or you can even use both of them at the same, uh, at the same time. So. Another thing that Embark is pretty good at is, uh, is dealing with uh, multiple con contracts that are dependent on each other. So to give some example of this, uh, so let's say that you, you have uh, three contracts and they, they're each dependent on each other. Uh, so in this case, you need a token to be deployed first and then deploy the DAO. And once that's deployed, you need to deploy the liquid democracy. So in, uh, in that case, you can, sp you can specify in a configuration file that uh, on the DAO you say, okay, uh, dollar sign token, and that will, uh, spec th that will tell Embark that, okay, this contract is dependent on the token, and I need, to, I need first to deploy the token and then pass the address uh, to, the, to the DAO. And you can have a galaxy of, uh, or a net, if you want to call it, of, uh, of contracts, each dependent on each other, and Embark will determine what is the right order to, to deploy the contracts. Uh, you can also have contract uh, instances. So this is a case that you have a sort of uh, a factory kind of contract that has the, all the main functionality. But then you have, uh, you have an argument that specifies a particular change. So in this example, let's say you have a packed token contract, but then you wanna, now you want to deploy two contracts, which is a USD token and a Euro token. So in that case, you can specify instance of packed token, so it knows what is the parent uh, contract. And then, you, and then you see here in the arguments, you have request oracle usd.json, so imagine you're, you're calling oracle like uh, oracleize. And so the, the, two, the two differences in arguments is what will make the contracts be different. And also, if you are using, you can also interact with the existing contracts. So let's say you're interacting with the DGS uh, contracts. Then you can sp specify the address, and Embark will just use that, that address. And you, it's also a support for uh, deployment commands that uh, they are executed once the, the contract is uh, deployed. So in this case, uh, I, I have an account manager. I want to manage my gold tokens. And on deploy, then I transfer for myself a thousand tokens to the, to the recently deployed uh, contract. Now, now Embark as a so as a new set of goals. The the goal is in, in Embark one was to uh, was to provide good deployment tools uh, for this kind of uh, complex uh, contracts. Now, uh, Embark two will focus a bit more on the client side and focus more in integrations with uh, storage layers, such as uh, Swarm, and communication layers, such as uh, Whisper, uh, and as well as providing uh, easier ways to distribute uh, applications. So Embark 2 is, is actually read, uh, done from, uh, was redone from scratch. 
Uh, it, by default, it comes with this dashboard. You can actually override this if you don't want to, if you want the old look. Uh, I, I just found that the, the, the look can, could be a very confusing if you're dealing with a lot of contracts because it was uh, hard to know exactly what was the status of different contracts. Uh, so I did this dashboard, so it, it, uh, it tells, for example, it has this section that says, okay, the particular contracts you can see, have they been deployed, where are they, was there an error, what is the error, uh, is still deploying. There's another section that you have the current uh, chain that you're using, in this case the development chain, uh, what Embark is doing right now, and available services. So let's say if your DAP was using IPFS and IPFS was unavailable, it would show up uh, red here. And uh, it finally also comes with uh, a console. Uh, so you can use that console with, to inter interact with existing contracts or to tell Embark to do something like uh, redeploy, in, uh, redeploy another contract or add another account, uh, et cetera. Uh, Embark 2 also introduces a, a client-side library, uh, which is called Embark GS. So that library is meant to aid the uh, developers uh, interacting with uh, contracts. It makes things a bit more simpler, and also provides APIs to abstract interaction with the, those layers, such as storage and, and uh, communication. So you can easily switch the, the technology if, if you need to, because Different technologies generally have different uh, trade-offs, and your, your, your DAP might have different needs depending on, on what you, you want to do. So, so the library introduces uh, promises, which is long uh, overdue. Uh, it, it, also, uh, it, it also introduces name parameters, so you can still pass a list of arguments if you want to, but you can also specify the name of the, uh, of the argument. Um, another, another thing it does also is that uh, it actually automatically calculates the gas cost and puts that in the call. So, uh, because it sometimes happens if you're working in a method and it changes, it suddenly becomes very complex and it just stops working because it didn't have enough gas. So, Embark tries to take care of this uh, so it doesn't happen. Uh, it does some, uh, it, it also attempts to do some automatic uh, type uh, conversion. So if you have a, a big int, it will just do a two number. Uh, if you have, a, say, an X that was supposed to be a string, it will also convert it to, to a string. This is all also configurable, because you might have different uh, uh, use cases, of course. And it also does the same thing with struct. Uh, usually if you call a struct, it will, uh, it will return you a list of the parameters. And, and if you change the order, it will also affect that order. So now, the, now it just uh, converts automatically to an ash. So you can just convert it by, say, you can refer to it as dot outer instead of uh, position zero to, to get the outer. And it also supports client-side uh, deployment. So you can uh, devote the contract on, on Embark, just like you do now. But, and, but you can make it available uh, on the client side. So you can uh, dynamically deploy contracts. Uh, there are certain type of applications that uh, require that sort of uh, functionality. There are very dynamic uh, dApps. Uh, I uh, example of this, if, if you wanted to do like a fun dApp, like uh, create your own token, you would use this sort of functionality. So you, you would have a, a form, the user would put the, the name of the token, some parameters like the supply, and then uh, that's, what, that's the command that's pretty much would run on the client side. Now for the communication, uh, Communication layer. So, uh, so Embark tries now to app, tries to provide an abstraction on on uh, on that layer, and you can see here an example that okay, put Embark GS messages, send message, you send that on a certain channel with certain data, and then you listen, uh, you listen on that topic. So that that's useful to make DApps communicate with each other. Uh, if you're familiar with Whisper, you can see this is actually. Pretty similar to the Whisper, um, to the Whisper uh, API, um, and uh, so the the reason that you would use this is because this way you can focus on behavior and not on the implementation details, especially because if you want to try out with different technologies, the implementation would be different, and uh, and this way you you just worry about the behavior. You don't need to worry about 
the, the actual details underneath. Uh, so if you change your technology, you don't need to change, uh, you don't need to change your code uh, all over again. So, so it has a, a provider functionality, and you can just uh, you can just choose the provider that you you want. So, uh, so in part two, we'll support this uh, three providers, which is Whisper, uh, a contract a contract for the messages, kind of replicates the this kind of uh, channel uh, fun functionality, and also will support uh, Telash. Uh, now, regarding for storage, it does a similar uh, type of abstraction. So you can just say, OK, I want to save text, and then I get uh, uh, a particular identifier. It's usually a NASH in case of uh, uh, IPFS, for example. And then when you pass it the hash, you will get back the, the data that you, you requested. And it also abstracts the functionality to upload files. Uh, so, for example, this, in this example, if you have a, this HTML input, you can just pass it the DOM element, and it will just take care of taking the file, doing whatever it needs, and it will upload the file. It's pretty useful because different technologies actually have slightly different ways they actually deal with the files and, and, and upload them. Uh, so, if you just use this, you don't need to worry about all those details. And then, you can, again, you can just do get URL ash, and you get the, your, the, your URL of the, that will point to, to the content of that file. Uh, so this is, this is pretty useful for, you know, if you want to upload cat pictures or profile pics or so on. And, and just like before, you can also choose a provider. You can choose a configuration. Uh, default for now will be IPFS, uh, mostly because that's what I was actually working on. Uh, but it, the default would later be uh, Swarm. And so there, there's actually five uh, providers supported. The first three are uh, Swarm RPFS and, uh, and a storage contract. And again, there's different trade-offs to this. Uh, you might actually want to store something on the blockchain, uh, which in this case will use a pre-deployed contract to, to do that. It's very expensive, but there are use cases that might actually be, uh, be worth it. Uh, there will also be supported uh, for MadeSafe and uh, Storgy. No. So regarding now DAP distribution, so Embark, right now there's two ways you can distribute your, your DAP with Embark. One is that you do Embark build, and it will create a, a directory that has your, your, all your DAP, all the needed files, and it can just copy paste it and put it on your web server, for instance. Or you can also do uh, embark deploy IPFS. And, uh, and this command, what it does is that the, it deploys your contracts if they are not already deployed, uh, builds your app, and uploads, it, uploads your, your dApp for, to IPFS. And then it uh, shows you, OK, it will be available in this URL or this URL. In that case, it's a, it's a gateway. So that, that's why we're supporting Embark 1, and Embark 2 will support uh, uh, Swarm RPFS, MateSafe, and store, Storgy as, a, as, as a decentralized storage for, for distribution. Uh, so finally, the other way that uh, Embark will also, this, uh, will also support that distribution will be as a desktop app. So it will have a command that will automatically create a full desktop app with the DAP. Uh, for Windows, Linux, and, um, and Mac. Uh, it will also include the binaries that are necessary, depending on the configuration that you choose. So in this case, if you distribute the app this way, and your app uses, say, IPFS, you don't need to worry if your uh, customer or user has IPFS, because if it doesn't, then the, then the app will use the binary that comes included with it. All right, then. And that's it. Uh, more information you can find it in uh, in uh, GitHub. Uh, if you uh, if if are passionate about uh, DAP uh, development, please join us at at our GitHub channel. I uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Yuri.